And our in-depth coverage of this tragic shooting continues now. Joining us live in studio is our Eyewitness News law enforcement analyst and former Rhode Island State Police Colonel Stephen O'Donnell. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. And, it, you know, it's, it's happened again. This is now the third police officer in New England killed in the line of duty, uh, murdered with a gun since April. Let's take a look here at those officers. Sergeant Sean Gannon from the Yarmouth Police Department, Corporal Eugene Cole from Maine, and now Michael Chesna in Weymouth. Certainly there's been a lot of talk about what we need to do better to protect our officers, whether is it, is it more funding, is it more training? What are your initial thoughts after seeing you know, these three men in such a short period of time, these officers killed in the line of duty here? Well, I think it's important to note too, it's 80 in the country that's right. happened since January 1, which is um, on target for a lot more than the, the usual. So I think people look at police killings as um, well, it's part of their job, but it's not part of their job. That policeman went to work in the day to do his job to protect and serve, and that's really what they do. So the training aspect is what it is, but I think it's more the suspects, the people that are involved in these incidents. It went from a routine traffic stop that mm -hmm. people call routine. There's nothing routine about it, and escalates quickly to a deadly force situation. And in, unfortunately, this is the a police officer is killed because of it. Now, this is an interesting scenario, and certainly more will come out with the investigation as it progresses. But allegedly, the the gentleman involved here, the suspect, did have a rock in his hand at one point, and and there may have been some sort of visual between the officer and the suspect, right, where the officer saw that he had a rock. Would that be considered a you know a deadly weapon? Without question, someone holding a rock, and the police officer already had his gun out, mm -hmm. which means he felt there was some type of possibility of deadly force. Right. And he made a decision not to shoot uh, for some point. Um, there's a groundswell of phenomena out there about all the things that happened nationally over the last five, six years where uh, police involved shooting. There was one involved in Saturday in Chicago mm -hmm. where an officer shot an armed man and they were protest over it. So those things weigh on the police heavily, and God forbid that a policeman doesn't react properly because of that. Um, that will all come out, but a policeman doing their job, someone coming at you a rock, that rock can kill you as an example. It, it knocks him unconscious. Mm -hmm. The defendant steals his gun and kills him. The same situation happened several years ago in Rhode Island. Yeah, we were, we were talking a little bit about that, the similarities, uh, not exactly, but some of the comparisons we can draw of the 2005 murder of uh, Providence Police Detective James Allen, who was killed with his own weapon. Yeah, it's different because that's an in-custody mm -hmm. situation where, again, he was disarmed and killed with his own weapon. But several years ago in West Greenwich, a defendant had just murdered someone, and yeah. a policeman saw the tail end of that homicide, and that policeman withdrew and, and retreated and could use deadly force. Eventually, several police officers and canines overpowered the defendant. But in talking to one of those police officers, why didn't he use deadly force? And he said, I didn't want to shoot an unarmed person. Now, put that in perspective, that person just murdered someone, mm -hmm. and to defend yourself and to be not overpowered and killed, that police officer is lucky that we're talking about the defendant being arrested. In this particular case, the defendant wasn't arrested till later after he killed the police officer. Are you worried in some cases that officers are, are maybe not acting as quickly as they should based on their training to protect themselves? Uh, absolutely. I, uh, I, as an outsider looking in now, yes, and talking to policemen nationally, you know, actually a couple of friends of mine from Chicago the other day, about how a policeman reacts, we'll never know the answer in this, mm -hmm. but a policeman's reaction are usually spot on based on their training and you want to make sure they don't hesitate and worry about that but it's on their mind they yeah. talk about it daily about shoot don't shoot a scenario and that goes to training it goes to the ground swell of what's out there but the bottom line I think is twofold is the people that live in this country should be supporting their police officers police officers are not infallible they're not perfect but they're out there doing their job to protect you and the secondly I think the sympathies and heartfelt Sympathies nearly go, need to go out to the family as well as those police officers. That police chief looked devastated in yeah. talking about his officer. Certainly, it's a discussion that will continue, no doubt, throughout time. We appreciate you joining us for your, uh, with your perspective this morning, and we'll be posting this interview in its entirety online later today. Pat?